to facilitate everyone's learning and cognition of daily smart BMS, then, we have made a series of instructional videos of the software protection board and accessories. Okay, let's take a look at our video catalog. If you have friends who need related videos, you can find the corresponding service staff to get our teaching videos. What we are going to talk about today is a connection tutorial about our mobile Bluetooth app. Let's first pass a short video to get a preliminary understanding of our Bluetooth module connection. let's take a look at the downloading methods of our foreign users. There is our official website of daily, Google Market, and foreign mobile apps. Apple App Store. Let's first take a look at our Dalilek official website first. We enter our Dalilek website on this website, www.dalilek.cn. We enter our web page and we find our information at the back of the web page. Where is the information? We found a tutorial on how to connect our mobile app to BMS. In this tutorial, there is an download link for our download method. Let's look at our Google Market again. We search for the name of our mobile app in Google Market. Smart BMS. S-M-A-R-T BMS. We click search. In the following application, we can see our smart BMS. You can download and use it. Finally, let's take a look at our overseas Apple App Store. We search for our app's name in the App Store of this Apple mobile phone called Smart BMS. S-M-A-R-T BMS. We click search. We can directly download and use dot. Hello, everyone. Today, let's explain to you how the mobile app can connect to Dallas Smart Protection Board through the Bluetooth module. First of all, let's take a look first, what are the materials we need to prepare? A software protection board that has been connected to the battery pack, one Bluetooth module and one mobile app software of Smart BMS downloaded. In the first step, we can activate the protection board by charging, or an activation button on the battery board. Everyone can take a look. Now the protection board is activated. The second step is to give our Bluetooth module plug in the protection board. We can find the corresponding Bluetooth check according to a logo on our protection board, which is composed of six pins. Right next to the battery board, we must look for the Bluetooth interface. This Bluetooth module must not be plugged in the wrong way. Then, we plug the Bluetooth module into the protection board. Now. The connection is complete. In the third step, we take the demonstration of the Android system as an example. The same is true for the Apple system. First, we need to turn on our location information and Bluetooth. Open the location information then, we open our mobile app, Smart BMS. Our app can support multiple languages, including Chinese, English, Russian, and German app will automatically recognize the system language of your phone. Then, we can see our Bluetooth module. We click connect. Let's take a look. The connection is successful. Now let's take a look at our first main page. The main page is a state of our real-time display. The first one is the SOC of our remaining power. The remaining power is 80%. There are also total voltage and real-time current, as well as our charge and discharge MOS switch, and a switch for whether our balance is turned on. The following are the highest voltage, lowest voltage, and the average voltage of our battery. There is also a pressure difference, including several cycles, and then one of our alarms, and several fault messages. And the next one is the temperature on our side. It is a real-time display of a temperature. Here, how many strings are there in our battery? And what is the voltage of each string? This is accurate to the millimeter level. You can see it. From our perspective, our parameter settings are here. 
The first page is the most important and commonly used parameters of our protection board, including cell over voltage protection, cell under voltage protection, total voltage over voltage protection, total voltage under voltage protection, differential pressure protection, heart and discharge, current protection. The values here can be set, but if it is not for special reasons, it is also recommended that you do not change these values lightly because we all have factory default values. But if we need to set it, take the first one as an example. The single over voltage protection is the overcharge protection of this protection board. Under normal circumstances, we will set it to 4.25V. Let's modify it here. Well, we enter 4.25 here. We click the green setting behind, and a password will pop up at this time. The initial password of our protection board is 123456. If this password is forgotten, we can contact our sales staff to help solve it and retrieve the password. You can also reset the password. Let's take a look, and then the parameters of the machine in front of the body have changed to 425V, indicating that we have the setting is successful, including over discharge protection. We can also set it to 0 0.8. Click settings. When the previous machine parameter becomes 2.8V, it means that we have succeeded. Then we look at our second page. The second page is a feature of our battery cell. The first is that the type of battery is ternary lithium, lithium iron phosphate, or lithium titanate. We can click on the setting. And the second one is the rated capacity, which I mentioned to you earlier, is the software protection board on the battery pack. The first thing it needs to do is to first set the capacity of the battery pack, right here. If your battery pack is 30R, you need to enter a 30R click to set it here. Only if you set it here, and then display the real-time status, the percentage of its remaining power is accurate. Then the following is the sleep waiting time, and a manually set power ratio of the SOC, and then let's talk about it here. Let's extend it a bit. In other words, why was the battery display inaccurate when it was first installed? First of all, when you are fully charged for the first time, the protection board will be automatically calibrated to your 100% power level, and then the following will be used according to your one. Then this percentage of remaining power will become accurate. The following is a balanced turn-on voltage, and a balanced turn-on voltage difference. Let's look at the third interface. The third interface is the setting of the acquisition board. Here is the interface used by our R&D staff. Don't bother to set it up or worry about it. What about the fourth interface? It is temperature protection on our side, and it is also very important here. There are charging high temperature protection, charging low temperature protection, and discharging high temperature protection, discharge low temperature protection, differential pressure protection, and temperature protection of the power tube. You can set it up. The value you see now is the default value for our side dot is a factory preset value on our side. Then we look at the last interface. The last interface is called charge and discharge control. Here, we can just turn on and off the charge switch and the discharge switch. Then, what about restarting the system, resetting the current to zero, and resetting the password, like these functions. Everyone can go see and learn.